Let's bring you this now. A new study coming from Oxford University shows that common vaccines such as those for flu and measles could help reduce the burden of COVID-19. Case loads, hospital admissions and deaths are reduced. Now, senior research officer at the Vaccines for Africa Initiative, Dr. Benjamin Gagina, joins me now to tell us more about this. And, Doc, I appreciate your time uh, this morning educating us and enlightening us on these vaccines and what they could actually do. So take us through what this study uh, actually found. Yeah, good morning to you and to your viewers. So this is a very interesting study uh, mm. that was done by a team from uh, UK and, and in the US, and you correctly said Oxford University. And what this team did was to make use of um, data from the uh, International Modeling uh, COVID-19 Consortia. And, and they could use that data to model and to show what could be the potential benefits of other vaccines uh, that we routinely give, uh, which includes measles, influenza, and, and even pertussis. And, and what they showed is that uh, giving these vaccines during the period of, of, of COVID could potentially have a significant impact in the reduction of hospitalization as well as severe COVID, uh, and they, they looked at U.S. Uh, as, as a case study. Yeah, and while we understand that, you know, the research team made mention of vaccines, you know, for flu or measles, etc., they didn't really specify, right, Doc, uh, any particular vaccine? Uh, no, no, and, and uh, they, you, you're correct, they did not specify. But I think what we, is important to underscore here is that uh, the observation that has been done on this mentioned in this modeling study is something that scientists have known for quite some time, where mm -hmm. you give one vaccine for a specific disease, but you can get non-specific, what is called non-specific benefits, which are protective to other pathogens. So as an example, there are some studies that have been done in Guinea-Bissau showing that uh, following BCG vaccination, uh, which is routinely given soon after birth, uh, babies who receive BCG vaccine uh, tend to have less uh, mortality, meaning that uh, the death rate in this group is much lower than those who do not receive BCG. And if you look at BCG is given to protect TB mm. uh, or tuberculosis. And if you look at the cause of death that these babies are protected from, it's actually not tuberculosis, it's other infectious diseases. Right. So, and these field observations have been confirmed in the lab where you give a vaccine for one disease and you induce an immune response, which is called cross-protective immunity that is able to protect you against another disease mm. that you're not vaccinated for. So it sounds to me, Doc, yeah. like, you know, this uh, research study uh, almost gives the responsibility to everyone, particularly during a pandemic, to ensure that their vaccination history is, is up to date. Absolutely. You, you, you've raised a very important uh, question that I wanted actually to clarify. What mm. this shows is that when we vaccinate people against measles, against flu, the key concept is that we're protecting against those specific diseases. But there are some non-specific benefits that accrue from this vaccination that we give to these people. So it is always important to make sure that we are up to date with our vaccination. And don't forget, now we're talking about the concept of live vaccination, where we, we give vaccines, some vaccines to pregnant mothers, for example, tetanus and influenza and pertussis. Then in childhood, we give vaccines uh, like for measles. And then in, in adolescence, we give vaccines for HPV, as an example, to protect against cervical cancer. And then late in adulthood, we give vaccines uh, for pneumococcal disease, uh, against pneumococcal disease. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to know, speak to your healthcare provider. Whatever age you are, you will be eligible for certain vaccine. And it's important to always stay up to date with vaccination. Yeah. Uh, Doc, with that being said, before I let you go, how, is it, how important is it rather to also note the timing of uh, vaccinations? You know, does it matter, particularly with, you know, the delivery as well during the rising phase of the wave of infections, I suppose, uh, that we see? Does that have an impact when you look at the timing of these infections and the delivery thereof? Yes, so coming back to that study, and, and it's important to underscore here that it's a modeling study, mm. meaning that it makes use of data available 
then it predicts what would be the outcome. So it's, it's, it's almost a way to say, okay, from the data that we have, uh, this is what we, we see. So th they say that uh, from the findings is that if uh, vaccines such as those against flu, measles, uh, are given to um, a certain population, not the elderly, mm. actually, they say specifically for 20 and 20 and above, 20 years old and above. Right. And given during the time of the peak of, 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 of the pandemic, then you, you are likely to achieve up to 5 to 15 percent a reduction in, in hospitalization and severe COVID. Interesting study indeed, and I appreciate you breaking it down for us. Dr. Benjamin Kakina joining us, of course, uh, to talk more uh, about this particular study.